something in that section would bother us. So let's take a look at 22. Now all the problems in this section are done the same way. Um, I might go ahead and plot this just so I get a feeling for what it looks like. So there's the point negative 2, 1 and negative 2, 6. And four six. And four one. What do I got here, Jamie? What shape? It's a rectangle, right? I don't think it's square. I haven't proven that yet, but it is um, definitely a rectangle. So, what am I supposed to be doing? Uh, finding the area and the perimeter. Okay, these two, now I can use the distance formula, but I really don't need it because these two are on a vertical line, right? So how far is it from one to six? Five. Five. And how far is it from negative two to four? So this thing has a perimeter of 22, right? Now what's its area? Well, it's a rectangle. How do we find the area of a rectangle? Base times height, length times width, so that would be 30, square, whatever. Okay, Jamie? Now, if it were a triangle, if one of those is a triangle, you're going to do everything exactly the same way, but your area wouldn't be base times height, your area would be one half base times height. Okay? Anybody else? I think there's another section that might cause us trouble. Mr. Kerr? Well, I had a question on 23. 23? Yes. Find the midpoint? Yes. Now, because they're not coordinates? Yes. Okay, just think about it. They're, they're just numbers, so we're on the number line. So we want to be uh, negative 9.3 and 10.6. And we want to know what's right in the middle of those two points. Well, how do we always find the middle of anything? It's an average. So you're just going to add those and divide by... Two. Okay. In this case, it's not two. It's not like on a coordinate plane. It's just on the number line. So this is like just having the x's. Yeah. What's the midpoint to average? So okay. just add them and divide by two. All right. Thank you. Jamie. Thirty-six. Thirty-six. Yeah. I was afraid that you might forget how to find the percent of increase. We do that in first year algebra all the time. Did anybody happen to remember how to find the percent of increase? A couple of you were in here when I said it earlier this morning. Yes, ma'am? Uh, do you do like the original minus x of e by divided by the original exactly. times of? No, well, well, times 100 would be the percentage, yeah. Um, it's the difference, percent of increase or decrease is the difference divided by the original. And like she said, to find the difference, you just subtract. So if I'm doing, I'll just do A. Uh, what have I got in January of 1996? Um, what would you say that is? Where's that dot for 96? What would you say? One forty one, you said? I can't I couldn't hear you. One, I said one forty five. One forty five. Alright, we'll go with one forty five. And then how about um, where am I going to January of ninety seven. What what did we have in ninety seven? About one eighty two. So there's our difference, and what am I going to divide that by? The original, which you said was 145. So whatever that comes out to be, that's your percent of increase. Now, because we estimated these, might your answer be a little bit different than your neighbor's answer? Sure. I mean, it should be close. It should be close, but it won't be exact because you may have said 143 
instead of 145. So it's the difference divided by the original. All right, anything else? Uh, Bailey? Yesterday, we talked about looking at an absolute value inequality and thinking about it on the number line. So what does this say to me? This says, literally this says, the distance between some number, that's x, and 3 is more than 4. Remember that from yesterday, talking about that? So, we said, okay, here's 3, and I want to be more than 4 away, so I have to be at least out here at 7 and at least back here at negative 1. Remember that from yesterday? Okay. So now this is exactly the same thing. It just has letters instead of numbers. It says y is more than d units from c. So some number y is more than d units from c. So instead of saying some number x is more than 4 units from 3, we're saying some number y is more than d units from c. So we're going to have our absolute value. This might be the easiest one. How far away are these points from each other? What's their distance apart? More than D units, so there's the D right there. Now up here, X is uh, the distance. X and three were four units apart, right? <clears throat> what are D units apart here? Y and C. The distance between Y and C is more than D. The distance between X and 3 is more than 4. Okay, anybody else? All right, today um, I think we'll start you open up your books, and if you don't have a book, you need to take a picture of somebody's or share or something. Take a look on page 28 at the quick review. We're not going to do all of these, but I want to talk about a couple of them. So what would that answer be? Can you do that? What would that be? Anybody? Bueller? Answer. 
Absolutely, uh, Mr. Laskowski. 4x plus 5y plus 9. Anybody want to agree with that? Everybody okay? So we have no problem collecting like terms. All right, let's take a look at number 3. This is kind of the same thing. Has a little bit of additional step in there. How would we start this one? Trevor? Distribute. We would absolutely distribute. So Trevor, read me what I'd have here if I just distribute all the way. 6x minus 3y plus 4y minus 4x plus x plus y. And then we do what we did up here. So what's that going to give me? How many x's? The next one is going to have about three left. About three of them, OK. Everybody okay with that? Easy enough. All right, let's take a look at, um, well, we'll start with number five. That's incredibly easy. These are fractions. We're adding them. What's the rule for adding fractions? Got to have a common denominator. denominator. These already do, so we can just go ahead and add those, and that would be 5 over y. Yeah, that, that's easy. But what, would, what happens when they don't match? For example, number six. Do you know what you do when you have to add those two fractions and their denominators do not match? Bailey? Yeah, your common denominator, you're exactly right, Bailey. Your common denominator is going to be both of these, right? This one already has the y minus 1, obviously, but it needs the y minus 2. And this one needs the y minus 1. So now we have our common denominator. See how they match? So now in this numerator, we have y minus 2 plus 3y minus 3. Everybody following along OK? So we would end up with 4y minus 5 over our common denominator. We'll do one more of these. I know you've done these before, but it doesn't hurt us to do a little bit of review before we get the harder stuff. Number uh, seven. How do you handle it when you are adding a whole number in a fraction? Think of this as a fraction, and then get your common denominator. So what would our common denominator be? X. X. This one already has an x. This one needs an x. So 2x plus 1 over x. <coughs> Do we cancel these? No. Never with a plus sign, right? If you got a plus sign, oh, no cancel, or a minus. Very good. Well, I picked a few problems to do your homework. There's going to be all different kinds of stuff using these skills. So I want to go through a few, and then I want to do some review problems to make sure everybody's up to snuff here. But let's start with number one. I'm on page 29 now, looking at the exercises. How do you do problem number one? Uh, Ms. Hartman. Um, we'll get the 3 over to the other side, and then keep adding that. Okay. Well, let's talk about that. Yeah. Now, getting the 3 over to the other side is absolutely not wrong. Um, this is a quadratic equation. It's called a quadratic yeah. equation, and we love to get them set equal to 0. There's nothing wrong with that. Taking out the x has me a little bit concerned, because why? 
Well, oh no, because the three is. It doesn't have an X. Yeah. So if it had an X, I'd be all set, but it doesn't. So I don't think that's what I want to do. Did, did you read the problem, you guys? You read the problem? Okay, what? Don't make this harder than it is. Um, Rachel? Okay, we can absolutely solve this equation. And you want to factor it. There are other ways to solve a quadratic. If we factor it, what would those factors look like? to get this, right? We're sort of unfoiling here. So to get 2x squared, we have to have a 2x times an x. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. Um, now, how would I get a 3? What am I going to put? What times what gives me 3? Um, 1 and 3. Now, when I foil, this would give me a, this would be the outside term. That would give me a 6x, and that would give me a 1x. I want to end up with a positive 5. So what signs should I put in here? That should be a minus, and that's got to be a plus. Now, it's got to be a plus, because these two times each other have to give me negative 3, which means one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. Why did I put the negative here and the positive here? So that when I FOIL, my outsides and insides would give me a positive 5, right? Okay. Now, I don't know what, where you are in factoring. You don't even need to factor this problem. Now, now that we have a factor, we might as well go ahead and say, okay, what are my answers? One half and negative three. But again, did you read the question? What, what might we have done that would just have saved us a little bit of headache? Emma? You could have plugged in the Yeah. They asked, they said, which of these are the answers? So I could have gone to the original equation and just plugged in negative 3 and see if it worked. And then plugged in negative 1 half and see if it worked. And plugged in 1 half and see if it worked. Now, you can solve. There's nothing wrong with that. What might we have done instead of factoring? Some of you are struggling with the factoring. I can tell that. What, what might I have done instead of factoring? It's fine to factor it, but what else could I do? The quadratic formula or complete the square. I would not recommend completing a square on this problem, but you could have used the quadratic formula. All right, so what's the moral of the story? If they give me answers and ask me which ones are solutions, what are my options? I can solve the equation or I can just plug in. Whatever is easiest and probably fastest for you. All right, number nine, question number nine. Determine whether the equation is linear in x. Do you have any idea what that even means? What does it mean to be a linear equation? Trevor? To have at least three points in the line. Well, it, it would mean if it were a, if it had, this, like this one does not have a y in it, Trevor. If it had a y in it, then yes, it would graph as a line. This one is just an x. Its equation is just an x. So what we're asking is, is that variable linear? 
what does it mean for a variable, a single variable, to be linear? I kind of gave it away here. What did I tell you about this equation? What kind of equation is this? This is quadratic. And why is this one quadratic? Because its variable is squared. What would the equation look like if it were linear? Okay, again, if it had two variables in it, it indeed would look like this. But what if it didn't have a y? What if it only had x's, like the equation in the book? Jamie? It's not squared. What's its power? One. One. Take a look at equation number nine. What's its power? Well, it's a square root. What power is that? That's x to the one half. Is that a linear variable? No, because she just said, and she was right, if you're linear, what is your power? One. Are there any linear equations in that group? Five to ten, do you see any linear equations in there? How about number five? Yes. What about seven? Seven's tricky. When you simplify equation seven, what happens? There's no x's. And in fact, that's a false statement, isn't it? So that's a no. Seven is a no. What about six? No, there's no variable at all. What about eight? No. What about 10? Be careful. No. No, why? Yeah, why not, Dan? I know. What's the power on x in the denominator? Yeah. yeah, and what did we say? If we're going to be linear, what does our power have to be? One. one. Not negative one, one. So that's why. All right, number 24. Um, you can probably do this with your eyes closed. It's pretty easy. But let's run through it. How would you start this? Okay, hopefully I copied it right. Okay, so you distribute and um, tell me what you're going to have. Uh, Alexis, can you tell me what you have here when you distribute across? Now let's collect like terms. Audrey, what happens when we collect like terms? So what do we have over here on this side? Just on um, this side. The 15z minus the 8z, which is 7z. Mm -hmm. And then the negative 9 minus 4, which is um, negative 13. Perfect. Beautifully done. All right. And let's have Victoria. How about what happens next? Then you would, I would take Nobody's going to have trouble with that, right? Um, let me see. It's about 26. What would we do with 26? Any ideas? We always have fractions in these problems. They drive us crazy. John, do you have any idea how to start? This is number 26. Multiply by 3. Absolutely. If we can get rid of the fraction, let's get rid of it. So what happens over here when I times by 3? Those are gone. So this just is 4x minus 5. Don't be messing with that numerator. These cancel. Now I'm going to take this whole thing times 3. Does that look okay to everybody? So doing what we did before. If I added right, I got 7 halves. Is 
239 is called a compound inequality because it's two inequalities in one. You are welcome to split that if you would like. You can actually make two separate inequalities out of that. Those inequalities, if you chose to do that, would be this and this. Perfectly legit. I would not do that, though. I'm kind of lazy. I'm going to leave this all in one piece and subtract 6 all the way across. And what does it tell me about x, then? x is between negative 4 and 3. As long as you, in this case, subtract 6, but as long as you do whatever you need to do to both sides of the inequality, you're okay. You can leave it together in one piece if you want to. Just a couple more, and then we'll do some review work. 42. Not a hard problem, but it does have one little thing you got to be on the lookout for. Um, Mahala, how would you start this? Um, distribute the 4. And what would that look like? Um, that would be 4 minus 4x and then plus 5 plus 5x. Beautiful. And then, uh, Sarah, what would we do next? Um, combine the terms. So we're going to just work over here, right? And yes, what would we, we have do, over here? Um, one of Plus one is greater than minus one. And then you want to go back and let's rethink that one for a minute. Oh, that's a positive. Yeah, no, it's not. Here we go. Good. And then um, would you pull the three x over? You can absolutely. So you have negative two x is greater than negative ten, and I'm glad you did that because this is what I wanted to remind you of. I'm sure you all remember. But I'm going to divide by negative 2 now. And what do I have to remember to do when I divide by negative 2? The sign changes. This the inequality changes. Remember? OK, you're all staring at me like, oh, Ms. Ford, I'm so smart. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just remember it when we take a test, OK? One more. Uh, for some reason, I wanted to do 52. Hard. How would you begin that, Emma? Um, get rid of the fractions. And how would you get rid of the fractions this time? Um, multiply by 6 and 8. Well, could we multiply by 6 and 8? Absolutely. That's going to give us some pretty big numbers. It's perfectly okay. What could we do instead of multiply by 6 and 8? Emma? Could you cross multiply? What? Can you cross multiply? Absolutely, you cannot. Oh, you can. For many reasons. Um, one reason is, oh, the it's only time you can cross multiply. multiply is when you have a proportion. That's one fraction, one oh. fraction. I got two over here, bad news. The other thing is, this is an inequality. Cross multiplication works in equations. Proportions, equations, not inequalities. So, no, I don't think we want to do that, although it's a good thought. Lily? So you want to multiply by basically 48, perfectly okay, but we could get away with multiplying by 24. 24. That's your call, completely up to you. So if we multiply by 24 simply because it's smaller, remember both sides, everything, everything gets times by 24. This one would be 12 minus 16y. Keep an eye on my arithmetic. I had to do a bunch of burpees this morning. I'm a little bit flustered. 
6y, watch this, plus 9. Are you okay? What do I got over here? They have 22 plus 21. Again, please keep an eye on my arithmetic. Don't want me to make a mistake. 2y. Okay with that? What if the direction said answer in interval notation? You know how to do that. Lexi, do you remember how to answer something like this in interval notation? That's the parentheses and the brackets thing. over 2, absolutely. And what's going to be the other piece of our set? Remember, interval notation always involves two things, separated with the comma. We're starting at 27 halves. Think about what this looks like on the number line. We're starting at 27 halves and going like that. So we're starting at 27 halves. Where are we ending? So we'll put an infinity here. Now, am I going to use parentheses notation or bracket notation here? Watch it now. See that or equal to? That means that dot's filled in. And when the dot's filled in, we use the bracket. And infinity <coughs> always gets the parentheses, so that's how that would work. Bailey? Oh, Lord, I have no idea. Did I make a mistake? No, is it, why is it with the X? Okay, tell me out again. Oh, why is 27 2 first in the interval? Okay, when I graph this, always graph it, okay, if you have a concern. When I graph that, it looks like this, right? When I write my interval notation, it's in the order on the number line. So this starts at 27 halves, it ends at infinity, just like Lexi said. So they've got to go in that order. If I had shaded this way on the number line, then it would be negative infinity and 27 halves. So if the answer is like y is greater than, so they're greater than the equal to, it would be a parenthesis? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, they would both be parentheses. Okay. All right, let's do a little bit of, um, I, I got a few more vocabulary words I want you to highlight, and then we're going to do a little bit of review. So get your vocab sheets out. words you're uncomfortable with, let's talk about it right now. 19 to 25, 30.
anybody see a word there you've not ever seen before or you have no idea what it is or any clarification? We're done. Good job. Let's check these over. You guys get them at your seats. What do you think? distance formula, it's the difference of the x's squared, the difference of the y squared, and then they are added together. This is a version of the Pythagorean theorem, so it's a squared plus b squared, okay? So this should be a plus. But even if it were a minus, 16 minus 9 is not 5. But we don't care because we're not subtracting anyway, so it's the square root of 25, which is 5. Okay? You guys got it? All right, midpoint. How do we do on that one? Average to negative 1 plus 3 divided by 2, 2 plus 5 divided by 2. How do you feel about that? Feel okay about that? All right. Let's try another review problem. <coughs> scalene, equilateral, and isosceles, so we know what that means. 
So basically, what are the boys going to try to figure out? If the sides, what the length of each side is, and then they're going to compare them. So what are we getting practice in here, Vincent? What are we getting practice here in? What are we going to use to find the length of each side? Oh, the distance part. Do we need practice with that? Yeah. Yeah, so let's do. get busy. That would be pick up a pencil. And yeah, there you go. They're dividing up the labor. You can do that with your partners if you want. Each of you find a different side. Today's Tuesday. You know why I love Tuesdays? Math link days. Coming up. We'll register soon. We'll still work on the t shirt design. We're going to order our t shirts this year when they register, so we'll have them for the first day. Can we get sweatshirts again? Well, we didn't get them last year, so maybe this would be a year to get sweatshirts again. I would buy a sweatshirt. I would probably buy two sweatshirts. What's your conclusion? Scaling? All right, let's, I, I made it up, so it probably is scaling. Let's compare your answers with the rest of them. Did you get root 13 as one of your sides? Yes. How about 3 root 5? Look at that. They reduced the radical. It came out to be the square root of 45. 3 root 5, and then root 34. Scaling triangle. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. All right, let's try this one. Write the equation of the circle with a center at negative 1, 5, and a radius of 4. Oh, let's make it 4 root 2, just to make it interesting. Do I have a volunteer who would come up and do that? Uh, Victoria? Thank you for volunteering. Is it four root two? Yeah, it's four root two. The radius is four root two. think? X plus 1 squared? Thank you, Victoria. Y minus 5 squared? Oh, yeah. And equals 32. Everybody good? All right, one more. Do I have a volunteer who would come up and simplify this disaster? Things first. There's no hard and fast rule um, 
have with these kinds of problems. You're allowed to do whatever you want to do first.